15 orders out the door. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to one of my videos. If you don't know already, I'm Tommy Trades and I'm a full-time eBay reseller, now dabbling on whatnot and sharing my journey on YouTube. Yesterday was a crazy day for picking and packing. We had a three hour whatnot show that we did on Sunday and there was over 40 items to pack into 20 different orders. I was going to try and cram in all the eBay orders as well, but it was just going to take way too long and I would have had to do multiple trips to the post office. So I thought I'd do the whatnot on Monday and then as none of them needed to be sent out until Tuesday, I'll send out all the eBay orders today. But first I need to pick these eBay orders and then we'll go through what sold and how much. Cost. picked now let's go through what sold and how much for first up we have a disney store mickey mouse and donald duck collaboration backpack this one sold for 15 pounds and 94 pence with four pounds six fee postage taking us to 20 pounds order total we had three pounds 22 transaction fees 48 pence ad fees which leaves us with 16 pounds 30 pence altogether after postage we've got 11 pounds not too bad I've had this one for two to three months now and I'm happy it's sold. The next order is this DVD series one of Top Buzzer. It's like a 90s, 2000s sitcom about people living at home, stoners, stoner vibes. I remember seeing it in the shop and I was like scanning all the DVDs trying to see did any stand out to me. And it was at the time when I would sort of check in every single series to see if it was worth money or not. Randomly in and amongst the stack, this one was there and it was priced up at like 20 quid online at the time. I have had it for a few months, sort of slowly knocking the price down as time's gone on. And then over the weekend, someone sent an offer through for six pounds and I accepted it. I just want to get this gone now. I don't need it anymore. I think I probably have like 50p to a pound into this. So we're still making a nice profit. But the buyer paid six pounds for the item, three pounds 33 for postage to a total of nine pounds 35 pence. We had transaction fees of £1.48, add fees of 23 pence, which leaves us with £7.64p before postage. Just as I do with my games, I'll make sure I pop some bubble wrap in here so that the discs don't rattle around and fall out in transit. And if you don't do that already, I highly recommend you do. I get positive feedbacks all the time where people specifically mention me putting bubble wrap in the discs. Next up, we have a Making Music Leonardo Collection mug. As you see, he's got musical notes all around the outside of the mug there. I'm not sure what the song is. I used to be able to read this back in school, but that is long gone. And then as you can see, Leonardo Collection making music. There was a load of these on eBay and I was quite surprised, to be honest. There was like hundreds and hundreds of listings of this exact same mug, all priced around 10 to 12 pounds. I tried to stick in in that price and compete with people, but no one was taking it. Someone sent an offer through a 4.99 and I was happy to accept it. I think again, I've got like 50p to a pound into this mug. So I'm still making a little bit of profit. So in total, the buyer paid 4.99 for the item plus 2.94 postage, seven pounds 93 pence order total. Then we had £1.25 transaction fees, 19 pence ad fees, which leaves us with £6.49. And then after postage, we've got like £3.50. Gary V used to go on all about the mug life. And that's honestly like where I started picking things up from shops from was like watching loads of Gary V videos, being motivated that you could make money even with mugs, buying a load of them for like 20p, 50p to a pound. And that's how I started selling things really, like through mugs, mug life. We're well beyond that now, but we've all got to start somewhere, right? Next sale is an interesting one. I, I was, it's like, I'm happy it's sold, but it's hard not to be disappointed because I thought there was so much more value in these than it seems there was. When I first bought them, I got them from Antique and Toy Fair. If you haven't checked out the video, it's over on my channel. Be sure to go and watch that. Something a little different than charity shops and car boot sales. Really interesting vibe. But when I first found them and I was doing research into them, there was like boxes sealed for like £250. And then people were doing like packs of like seven to ten for £150 to £100. So I have seven and I did a, I tried to put them up for £70. 
ten pound a pack. No takers. It had loads of had loads of views, but no one but wanted to buy them. I was sending offers out for fifty. No one wanted to buy them. Slowly and surely, we've dropped the price down to forty five, to thirty, to twenty. And then today, we had someone send an offer through of fourteen pounds. And you know what? I'm just going to accept it. It means it's two pound a pack. Pretty much what I paid for it at the time, I believe. But it just means this is no longer sitting there doing nothing. It's actually put some money back into the cash flow. But they are Full Metal Alchemist trading cards. Sealed in the pack, brand new. I'm not sure if there's any chase cards which are like ultra rare and worth loads of money. They're not the craziest sort of cards to collect. But someone who's into anime, you're going to really enjoy these and if you're the person who's purchased them, I hope you find something cool inside. But seven packs of the Full Metal Alchemist cards have sold for £14 plus £2.94 postage, bringing us to a total of £16.94. Then we paid a transaction fee of £2.58, bringing us to £14.36p. And then after postage, we're at like £11. Back in the cash pot. Next up, an item we know sells well on eBay all the time. If you see it out in the charity shops, be sure to pick it up. It is Left 4 Dead on the Xbox 360. I did explain the issues I've had with this before, where I had two copies. Both have the Classics case, but only one had the Classics disc inside. I didn't realise that the first time listing them, so I had a return. This is the item that was returned. I've sold the other one already. And now this is the one with the Classics case and the standard disc. I have highlighted that in the listing, it's in the title, it's in the description, it's in the photos. So this person cannot complain. And yet we know some people still find a way. But this one sold for $9.99 and it was free postage I had on this one. $9.99 all in, £1.55 transaction fees, 24 pence ad fees, leaving us with £8.20 to play with. After postage, you're looking at like six pounds, something like that. Now, I love little gaming accessories like this, especially the old ones, which don't really seem to have any use anymore. I'm just so curious of who's bought this and whether they're planning to use it, if it's just a collection piece. I almost want to see them like mid-project using this. But it is a Max Drive USB flash drive for the original Xbox. We sold a like memory stick card holder thing previous week. And now we've sold this one. Its explanation is the cool new way to transfer game saves and more between your Xbox and any PC. Share game saves, team lineups and more. Even stores monster sa sized saves. That's really fine. But essentially it's like a USB stick that you can plug into your Xbox, record yourself playing the game, have all the footage on the USB, plug it into the PC and then it's a way for you to stream or edit videos playing on the original consoles. I tried looking these up and this was like the only one on eBay. None of these, this is the original game, plug and play. It comes in this little cardboard thing like this, you've got your instructions, there's a little mini disc in there, and then you've got the USB adapter to plug into the Xbox, and then the USB itself. Get that hair out of there, if it wants a bit of Tommy DNA. But this one sold for £18 plus £2.94 postage, bringing us to £20.94. We paid £2.84 in transaction fees and 50 pence in ad fees. That leaves us with £17.60. After postage, we're looking at 15 quid. I must have had a cassette collector snooping on my store because I've sold a couple of them. First up, we have Queen Hot Spice. Hot Spice. Hot Space it is a first issue cassette tape and from 1982. We sold this one for £4.99 pence plus £2.94 postage, bringing it to £7.93. After £1.31 transaction fees, we have £6.62 to play with. Then after postage, actually, we probably only got around three quid. But all sales add up, right? Things like that are really quick and easy to ship, so I don't mind having a few small sales when I can just post them out the door, get some extra cash. The other cassette we sold was The Prodigy Breathe. Now there's only two tracks on this cassette and I wasn't sure if this was like a special edition or something or if it was like a bonus when you bought an album. I don't know, but there's literally, there's only two tracks. It might be a sort of bonus or feature cassette. But we sold this one for £4.49 pence. We got £2.94 postage as well, bringing it to £7.43 after we paid £1.25 transaction fees. We've got £6.18. 
And then postage, still around three quid. Next sale is this Fogler. Finally sold. I've been shooting offers out for weeks, it seems. It seems like every day there's a new watcher on this item. So I've been sending out an offer pretty much every single day and no one's been taking it. I even sent an offer out for £12 and then someone paid the full asking price of £16.99. So we sold this one for £16.99 plus £2.94 postage and then we had a sales tax of £1.77 that the buyer paid. Interesting. That takes us to £21.70. eBay collected the sales tax and took the £1.77. We paid a transaction fee of £3.64 and an ad fee of £1.28, leaving us with £15 and one pence. After postage, we're looking at 12 quid. I did think it was going to go for more, like the 20 to 30 range, just because he is quite a rare fuggler, but his box is slightly damaged here and it's not completely sealed, so I can't command the highest prices. Command. Why do I always say command? Command and Conquer, I blame you as growing up as a kid. Red Alert 2. We sold a Bob Dylan vinyl under the Red Sky album. The buyer paid £12 for this one, £2.94 postage, £14.94 order total. We paid £2.14 in transaction fees, leaving us with £12.80. And then after postage, we still got a tenner. I've pretty much just got my money back on this one because I was in the charity shop and they had a load of vinyls that were all new and sealed and then a couple that weren't sealed. The unsealed ones were like two, three pounds each, but the sealed ones were 10 and I didn't really realise until I got to the till and was like paying. And then I didn't want to turn them down, especially when most of them had stickers on for like 24 99 I thought my money's got to be safe. But this one has sat around for a little while. I did originally have it up at 19.99. I'm happy to take the 12 pound and get it gone. Next up, we sold Carnival Funfair Games on the Nintendo Wii. We sold this guy for £7 and £2.94 postage, taking us to £9.94 total. £1.54 transaction fees, leaving us with £8.40. Then after postage, we're pocketing a fiver. It is brand new and sealed. I did have it up for a tenner. They sent through the offer a seven and I was happy to accept it. Especially if an offer comes in from a repeat buyer, I'm much more likely to accept it, even if it was more of a low ball, just because... I want to keep my customers happy, and if they like coming back to me, I want to give them prices they deserve. The next sale is for this Warhammer graveyard scatter, like, scenery set. There's some, like, gravestones in there, a few little broken skeletons and things like that. It's for Warhammer or tabletop games where you want to build some scenery and create a bit of an atmosphere with the game. I used to love all this stuff as a kid, but I never had the patience to paint it. I would just start and then throw it across the room because it didn't look how I wanted it to. But we sold this little bundle of stuff here for £10 plus £2.94 postage. We had transaction fees of £2.08, an ad fee standard of 83p. That leaves us with £10 and 3 pence. Then after postage, we probably got £7 in the bank. These cost me nothing. They were part of a private bundle sale that I bought. And I've made my money back on that already. So everything else is just pure profit, an extra £7 profit into the bank. Now I've done quite well on some of these before, that's why I was happy to pick it up at the time. I think I paid £2 for this. But it's an EDJ Dance Evolution 06 Music Now CD. There are two discs inside. They're essentially sample discs that have all of these different sounds on them, 4,000 brand new Royal If Free dance samples, stylish track arrangement. It allows you to create music before you could just download it all off the internet. But I think there's a return of people trying to like move away from downloading things from the internet and restrict themselves to what's on the discs or just to use like that more vintage authentic sound. But we sold this one for £12 plus £2.94 postage taking us to £14.94. We paid £2.14 in transaction fees, 36 pence ad fees, leaving us with £12.44. Then after postage, we're looking at like a tenner. £2 into £10, minus the £2 we paid for it, that leaves us with £8 profit. Then a couple of clothing sales, just to round things off. We sold this brand new with tags, Cotton Traders shirt. It's specifically called Cotton Traders Soft Touch Winter. Even though we're moving out of winter, it's still sold. I think I had it up for either $7.99 or $9.99, but someone sent an offer through of £6 and I was happy to accept it. Let's just get it gone. It's sitting in my wardrobe doing nothing otherwise. So they paid £6 plus £2.94 postage, leaving us with £8.94. 
We paid a transaction fee of £1.63 and that leaves us with £7.31. After postage, we probably got a fiver in the bank. Not sure how much I paid for this one, but it can't be more than a couple of quid. And then the final sale of the day is this Harry Potter Gryffindor maroon brand new with tags t-shirt. I found this one in a charity shop for two or three pounds. I nearly kept it for myself because uh, we do play Harry Potter Dungeons and Dragons with a group of friends every so often and it would be perfect for that. So I thought because it's brand new with tags we're better off sticking it on eBay and getting the sale. If it didn't have the tags it would be in my wardrobe for sure. But we sold this one for £11.99 plus £2.94 postage. That takes us to £14.93. We paid a transaction fee of £2.50, leaving us with £12.43. Then after postage, we're looking at like £9, something like that. So a £6 profit in this item. I have had it for quite a long time, like three to six months potentially. And I have sort of lowered the price on it over time. I originally had it up for £19.99 and it just seems like I was shooting for the moon at that point so when the prices come down i think it's a bit more realistic for people time perfectly with january payday into february and we got the sale so that's 15 items i've shown you of what sold how much for and how much profit we're expecting to make we have a total sales value of 230 pounds and 17 pence going out the door there are two other orders we're still waiting for payment on but once they come through i'll include them in the next video we're in full swing at this point orders to ship out every day, what not orders to do each week. There's videos to edit, content to pull out of the woodworks and bring to the surface. It's exciting times. I hope your weekend was as full of as many sales as mine and that your week's off to a good start too. I've also had my 100 metres of bubble wrap roll arrive and thanks to Married to Reselling for exposing the scams that are going on with this. I'm going to get this one measured for you on camera and we'll double check together if this is 100 metres or not and whether we can trust this for supplier. So my thinking for this is we measure from this door to this door and then we do it in reams of like how many of these have we got and then we count that all up at the end to see how much bubble wrap there actually is. But first, let's get this open, let's measure across the top and see what we're dealing with. Across the top, 16 inches across, 40 centimetres. Just give it to 250. So it makes it nice and easy for this. meters no 56 56 meters point four. 56.4 meters from a hundred meter roll so we've just rolled this out this many times back and forth we've measured it to 250 meters give or take uh, 250 centimeters give or take so it's two and a half meters there's about 56 meters worth of bubble wrap from a hundred meter roll I'll show my order summary on the screen so you can see who I've ordered it from and whether you think you should order from them yourself. If you have ordered from them yourself, have you measured the bubble wrap? I'm definitely going to be leaving some feedback, letting Amazon know that this seller is scamming people off with the amount of bubble wrap they supply and that they're advertising a false amount. Huge shout out again to Married to Reselling for encouraging me to do this. I would have just bought it and wrapped and bought another one as and when I need without even thinking about this. But this is definitely an issue that we need to fix. We cannot allow ourselves to be scammed off like this. I've literally got half of what is supposed to be here.
The other thing I did consider is because it's so close to half, potentially these are only 50 meter rolls. And when you've ordered 100 meters, they're supposed to send you two rolls. And it could be a fault on the person who's picking the order, doesn't understand that they're supposed to deliver two of these. But hey, I'm not trying to defend Amazon. I'm not trying to defend these scammers. I'm just trying to think of what are some logical explanations to all of this. But as you can see, I've only received half of what I've paid for. And because I didn't break it at each end, I can now roll it all back up and it's still easy to use. That's now been rolled back up and it'll be much easier for me to store. It is probably twice the size of what it originally was. But if we don't come down hard on these clowns, we're going to be up to our balls in jugglers. But yeah, I've essentially got half of what I've paid for. 50 meters instead of 100. Thank you very much for joining me in this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to smash the like button down below. Tap subscribe if you're new here. It's completely free and it really helps me out. Drop me a follow over on Whatnot. I'm currently doing one show a week, but that's soon to move to two or three. And I'm also on Instagram. So if you want to follow along for the journey, you can find me on socials. And if you can't be bothered for that, just watch another video, all right? The next one's probably here or there or something. See you in it. Peace. I'm Tommy Trades. I'm a full-time eBay reseller selling... There was a busy day of picking and packing yesterday. There was 40 whatnot orders to be... Over 40 items to be packed up and shipped. But first I need to pick all of these. That's 15 orders picked. Now let's go through. When I first bought them, I got them from an, uh, a toy fair. I almost want to see them set it up and have a prod. <clears throat> and it's still in his little... Oh. Oh. We've dropped them. So we sold this one for 69. <coughs> 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 I did think it was going to go for a, and especially as they had. <coughs> <coughs> Next up, we sold a Carnival Fun Fair games on the Nint. Especially when I. These cost me nothing. They were part of a big bundle that I bought from a private. These cost me nothing, by the way. They were part of a private... <sighs>